Uh, so let's talk about Bam Margera. Uh, you know, Alex Nario just said in the chat, he goes, I felt bad for Bam until yesterday. <sighs> and I'm telling you, the more we talk about Bam Margera, the more we cover him, the more I hear that from people. Yeah. The more I hear people go, ah, you know, it's, uh, you know, I, I used to feel bad for Bam, but since watching your thing, uh, you know, I'm starting to feel less and less sympathy for him. And I'm like, you know what? I saw it a long time ago with this guy, you know, especially with, you know, the way he's treating his family and everything else, beating the shit out of his brother or his brother beating the shit out of him. His brother beat the shit out of him, by the way, because he woke up and Bam was pissing in the sink. Right. It's gross. You beat the shit out of your brother for doing that. Yes, you do. And, uh, you know, I've been watching Bam and I've been like, this is just a junkie. This is just a guy who's just completely given up on everyone. He's leaned into his problem. He's blaming the people, the addicts. And this is my problem with the mentally ill, too. This is why I have a real hard time giving any kind of uh, uh, deferential treatment to the mentally ill. Is the way they drag everyone else into their bullshit and then blame everyone else. And then everyone else is against them and they're all the problem except for me. I, I can't tolerate the bullshit. They're always the victim. Always the victim. And that's Pam Margera. So yesterday we played his interview on BJ Investigates. And that lady, I got to tell you, is the absolute worst human being that I know of on YouTube at this point. She at the moment. Nasty. She's number one on my power rankings. She could go down. Other people could go up. But right now, she's the worst. Because she's totally simping for Bam. And then she brings Bam onto her show because she's simped so much mm -hmm. uh, for him. That she goes on, he's or she lets him come on, he's completely fucked up, he's talking shit about everyone, he's incoherent, he's rambling, and she's just so right. happy that she's got a name on her channel that she's letting him do all this destructive stuff that is getting him no closer to seeing his kid, getting him no closer to making things right with his family, and getting him certainly no closer to sobriety. Right, and she's hurting his family too. Like none yes. of this stuff helps, and all for clout. He, she's sitting there, and like he, he starts crying. He's like, just hearing his name makes me so sad and heartbroken and stuff. Yeah. So she continues to say his son's name over and over again. So he sits there and cries. She's a bad imitation of a soulless media person. Like she's even the soulless media people are better than her. She's like a, a terrible imitation of those narcissistic she pieces looks, of shit. She looks like an evil Brie Larson. Yeah, I'll go with that. Although, you know, Brie Larson has her own problems, God knows. <laughs> so Bam Margera made a, a, a video yesterday. And if you're looking for me to give you uh, the news that Bam has figured it out, Bam realizes that, you know, his, uh, his, his family is more important than his drug problem, and he's going to stop blaming everyone else. And Johnny Knoxville and Steve-O and Jeff Tremaine and Spike Jones and all these guys, all they tried to do was help him. Mm -hmm. All he did was reject them because it was more important for him to get high. If you're expecting that moment of clarity to come out of BAM, you're going to be disappointed in this video. This is bad. If, if you're like me and you gave up on BAM Margera a long time ago and you're just waiting to report on his death because that's where he seems to be headed... And you're now watching purely for the wreck and the shit show and everything else, then this video is going to be right up your alley. I mean, I'm, guys, I'll tell you, I'm at the point now where this ending poorly for Bam soon might be better for his kid in the long run. Right. Just than dragging this out. Because the only way this ends up better for his kid is if Bam gets clean and Bam becomes a part of his son's life. Bam living the way he's living now hurts his son in ways as a father and, and as parents. I, I don't know about you. I can't imagine how much it hurts his child at, as the older the child gets He'll for Bam to stuff. be like this. You're right. He will look up stuff about his father someday and this is what he's going to see. To me, Bam going down the road he's going down now is worse for his kid than Bam ODing and dying right now this yeah. minute. Uh, in my opinion, because at least then his son could move on. His soon to be ex-wife could move on. Bam's family could move on. The healing could begin because the weird thing about someone who's this addicted and this tapped out from reality is like you feel like you're living the funeral every day. Yep. The worst part would be over. Right. The worst of it would be over. So here's Bam's video that he made yesterday. And if you guys haven't seen this yet, uh, I don't mean to overhype it. This might be the worst one yet. It's pretty bad. This is pretty fucked up. 
This is an official message to anybody that cares about me whatsoever. More manipulative addict talk in the first three seconds of this thing. When anyone starts with, if you care about me at all. You you know, uh, nobody in the public is going to care about you until you start caring about yourself, first of all. You don't give a shit about yourself. You have no respect. First of all, you're making this video, and this is the worst part about addicts, is that they're fucked up all the time. There's never, you know, you need kind of that moment of clarity to hit rock bottom and get help. Mm -hmm. And the problem is he's running so fast from whatever it is that he's self-medicating from. He's running from it so fast that he can't stop to have a moment of clarity because he is, he's not just under the influence all the time. He is fucked up. It might kill him to take a moment to be sober. I mean, he every minute of every day for him, he is at the level that your buddy is at at the bar when he goes a little too far and you got to cut him off. That's right. every when you're second. Being like, hey, buddy, let's yeah. let's go home. That's every. That's him at the grocery store. I haven't seen a phoenix in two fucking months, and I'm so fucking fed up. I cry every day. I miss him so much, and I know that I have to wake up every day knowing that I probably won't get to talk to him or see him. And again, me, 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 victim, victim, victim. I don't get to see my son. And, and for one second, you don't stop to think, why is that? And then you only talk to people like this BJ asshole who's going to tell you it's okay, bam, your family's at fault. You understand that every time you tell this motherfucker that it's his family's fault or that they're being unfair to them, you might as well be loading up a dose of heroin and shooting it into his veins. Right. Why don't you stop thinking about the me, me, me for a second and think about how your kid feels? He's not going to. Because he's not going to stay clean. Is lo- he's not going to stay clean long enough to have those kind of coherent thoughts. It's up to the people around him. But now he only associates with with uh, uh, you know you can use the word simp's uh, enablers is the professional word. I'm well, looking even for. the simp's for Bam are going to stop feeling sorry for him at some point and stop supporting him because this no. is so gross. This BJ, I, I tell you this, I, I watched that that interview. She'll get the backlash. That BJ will not ever feel bad about anything she's done and then when bam fucking dies from people like her enabling him and allowing him to keep going down this road she will sit there on her stream or on her on a video and she will talk about how bad she feels and how sorry she is and oh this is so terrible and who could have seen this coming bitch everybody but people like you who were sucking this guy's dick figuratively speaking for a little bit of clout so that you could pump up your YouTube numbers. Again, I can't yell about Bam Margera enough that you fucking people are doing this for 10, 15, 20, 30,000 views and you're killing this man. Even worse, when he does die, she's going to go on her stream and say, oh, well, I tried to have him on and yeah. give him a platform to tell his side of the story and get his feelings out there. And this is just too bad. She you will know? still make it about how she's a victim. And how she tried her best. And poor Bam. None of, I mean, these enablers are just as bad as the addicts in terms of their grip on reality. Meanwhile, everybody who's ever known Bam and given a shit about him has tried, failed, and washed their hands of him. Even his wife. And somebody left a, a YouTube comment yesterday that kind of gave both sides of the discussion you and I had about whether or not his wife's a gold digger or if she's someone who mm-hmm. really tried fucking hard. And finally is like, look, if you ain't going to be around, I'm going to need some, I'm going to need a check, you know, because I can't, I can't have you. I can't, bl- I, I don't blame her. She can't have him around that child. Nobody's blaming her for that ever. But she also could, she needs money to raise that kid and he should have to pay up. Uh, but you were saying that. Well, there, what about that, working? It, Where, where's the job come in? You were saying that she seems a little gold diggery with it. And, and someone made a great point on in the comment section on this video yesterday. Check out our BAM video from yesterday. We'll have a new one up today, obviously. But um, they said it's both. They yes. said this guy should be paying up. This woman loved him. She tried. She fucking hung on until the better end. A lot of other people who aren't bad people would have left this guy long before she did Mm -hmm. she tried everything but also 15k seems a little steep yep so because in my opinion what are you just sitting around then and not working for your child like you're just expecting the paycheck from him she says she's earning less than three grand a month with help and welfare 
Oh, yeah, and public assistance. Yeah, right. that's what I'm saying. So nowhere did I hear that she has a job, which right. bothers me a little bit. So he said that, and I was like, yeah, you know what? That's that's pretty accurate. But you look at all these people, Steve-O. Like, Johnny Knoxville did not need to put this fucking train wreck in Jackass Forever. Nope. But he offered him, I, I think they said 5 to $10 million to do Jackass Forever. More than he's worth at this point. And they they made it, they, they made the offer to him not to have him in the movie, but to get him clean. Mm -hmm. They said, you're going to be on the set. You're going to live on the set with your family. We're going to drug test you. We're going to put you on these. We got to put you on like, uh, not anti-rejection. That's when you get a transplant, but like anti-withdrawal drugs. Yeah. We're going to give you drugs so that we can ease the come down a little bit because, you know, you got to do the movie. Uh, but we get we get to piss test you. And he yelled and he screamed and he lost his mind about that. And these people are evil and they're terrible. And that's back when I had already said that Bam's a piece of shit. And that's when the majority of the world was against me and, and commenting that I'm, a, I'm an asshole. I, I don't understand addiction and this and that. And as, that was about a year, year and a half ago, maybe more. Whenever Jackass Forever was filming. And every video I've done on Bam since then, there's been less and less than that and more and more of, you know, hey, look, this guy's... He's if he's not going to turn it around, it ain't turning around. I'm thinking that most of his uh, behavior is like, as far as like saying, "Oh, you guys are shitty for doing that to me," like piss testing me and stuff. Yeah, it's because they all used to get totally fucked up together. They yeah. all used to, but the thing that separates Bam from the rest of them is like, the rest of them either quit doing it or do it at a level where they can still be a functioning human being, and he didn't do that. There's no. And he likes to blame it, blame it on Ryan Dunn's death all the time, which yeah. is not an excuse, by the to, way. Yeah, Ryan Dunn's death happened to Steve-O, too. Yes, it did. It happened to all of them. And not only has Steve-O gotten clean, Steve-O's a better human being since he got clean. You like, should want to do better. Your friend died behind the wheel because yeah. he was fucked up. Yeah. Steve-O, I, I, I've met and performed with Steve-O a couple of times, and he's always like he always greets you like you're an old friend. He's the nicest fucking guy in the world. He just, he's, for no reason. Like, whenever I would do those um, uh, civic, not civic center, what is it in St. Cloud? Convention center. Conven whenever I would do those convention center shows uh, with those different comics, I'd go backstage and I'd always leave them alone. When I was backstage, I'd go on that end of backstage. I'd talk to the radio people that were there. Like Oz would be there usually doing sound. And I would leave them alone. And Steve-O was the only guy who would come over. And he'd be like, why don't you guys come over here? You know, I'm a little bored. And this and that. He'd want to talk to you. He'd chat you up. He'd, you know, I'd, I'd have him on the show earlier in the day. Mm -hmm. And then he'd want to hang out with you uh, at the show. Uh, if I had to rank them, I would say Steve-O by far and away the nicest guy out of all of them. Uh, Gary Owen is... What what really annoys me about Gary Owen is that he's a nobody in mo like most people don't know who Gary Owen is. He's been like a part player in a few black movies. He's a white dude. He's sure. he's the wacky white dude in the black P in the BET movies. And he was a complete fucking prick with no reason to be. Steve O has no reason to be nice. Gary Owen should be behaving like Steve O. And Steve O should be behaving like Gary Owen. And then Donnell Rawlings, I will say, not a not a prick. D Donnell Rawlings is not a prick. But Donnell Rawlings is not a naturally friendly dude. Not th there's nothing wrong with that, but Donnell Rawlings was definitely a, if you don't approach me, I'm going to be here doing my own thing. I ain't going to talk to you. You know, he's kind of there to, he's, look, this is Donnell Rawlings. He's there to work, make his money, and go home. Understandable. That's what he's there for. I always imagine that Knoxville would have been a really nice guy too. Yeah, uh, but Steve-O, I can confirm, is one of the most genuine, well, we've nicest all seen human that. beings. We've all seen him be very nice and try to help people. Yeah. Uh, Chris Porter, another guy who's remarkably kind. He's a really nice guy. He's And he likes to bust balls. So he's kind of a smartass. I like him. He'll make fun of you, but he's a really nice dude. Uh, Bam Mar so Bam Margera has Steve-O try to help him. Steve-O tried to bring him on, on tour with him and everything else. He made it one show and he got fucked up and Steve-O went, I, I can't. Because cause he brought Bam's kid mm -hmm. so that uh, Bam would maybe stay off it. And then Steve-O, and Steve-O's such a guilty feeling guy. Like, he feels like he did something wrong because now he's got to get his kid the fuck out of there because I can't let Bam's kid see him like well, this. He probably had to talk to the kid's mom, too, and yeah. be like, hey, let me try this and see if this works. I'm trying to help and all this. And then, you know, and then Bam let down for her, too. And then Bam attacked Steve-O online mm -hmm. so now bam is saying i have blah wow woe is me i haven't seen my son in two months and i said this yesterday if you gave a shit about the kid 
more than you gave a shit about the drugs, you'd have seen them already. You, uh, uh, this victimhood shit with mentally ill and addicted people does not fly with me. I don't have sympathy. I want to lock these people in a fucking cage somewhere. When they sit there and they go, I haven't seen my kid in two months, and they, go, and they start pointing fingers. Uh, motherfucker, that's your choice. Yeah. You've chosen I not to see your kid for two months. I have a, there's a special place in hell for people like that. I mean, you want to hold a mirror to him and go, here's why you haven't seen your kid in two months, fuckface. Your, your wife would be the shittiest mom in the world if she let you see your kid right now. Yeah. She'd be a terrible mother to do that to a child. So, yes, Nikki drives me to fucking drink. Oh, so does my fucking mom. Yeah. And so does my fucking pep-talking yep. dad who tells me nothing but I'm a fat fucking loser, piece of shit, drug addict fucking loser. I mean, that should match the voices in your head. Yep. Is your dad wrong? And by, by the way, is that a nice thing to say? No. Do I think that dad's, uh, Bam's dad has actually said that to him? Not in those words, not at all. I don't believe it for a second. Bam's a lying addict. But number three, how long has your father probably tried Ooh. to be nice to you? Years and, and years. Yeah, and help you through every rehab that you escaped from, through every uh, recovery that you didn't take seriously. How many times has your dad had your fucking back? These mentally ill people and these drug addicts do the same thing. What have you done for me lately? They have no long-term memory of everything anyone's ever done for them. It's just, what have you done for you, me lately? They blame everybody for their problems. I have people in my life that did a nice thing for me one time 10 years ago, and I will tell people till the end of time, that's a good fucking guy. That's a good dude. He's awesome. He's great. If someone says a guy treated them like shit, and I knew that guy 10 years ago and he was really nice to me, I'll go, oh, that's too bad that you guys are having problems. I always thought he was a really good dude, you know? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna trash the shit out of the guy because one shitty thing happened, you know, over here. Mm -hmm. But Bam's one of these guys where I bet you his dad could tell him, Bam, you gotta get your shit together and you gotta get clean. You're wasting your fucking life with these drugs. And Bam would spin that in his head and tell everyone else because he needs to be a victim that... Oh, yeah, my dad tells me I'm a piece of shit, loser, drug addict, this, that, and the other thing. Oh, I'll tell you how that conversation goes because I've been part of those conversations and heard it. They just say, well, you don't understand. You don't understand how hard it is. You don't understand why I do this and how hard it is to quit. We all have problems. <laughs> <laughs> We've all got problems. You just don't understand. We read a, be my shoes. Yeah, we read a story yesterday that the average American has $10,000 of credit card debt. All right? That's a real problem. That is a lot. That's a lot of money that you owe that you're going to, you know, you're looking at a, a factor of years for most people to ever pay that back, if they ever will, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so Bam Margera, you listen to him and he goes, my wife makes me drink, my mom makes me drink, my dad makes me drink. Everybody but Bam Margera makes him drink. There's so many, I feel bad for this guy. There's so many hands holding shot glasses, pinching his nose and forcing the booze down his throat. It's remarkable. Yeah, it's like they have him shackled to something and they're shoving it down his throat. Guys, you guys got to like, get... You, those are your hands. Yeah, get sir. to Bam Margera's... Uh, uh, wherever he's staying right now, you got to get there. There's somebody chaining him to a radiator and pouring booze down his throat. The poor guy. So, and my mom is a brain fucking manipulator, and my brother stole Castle Bam... And he thinks it's called Castle Jess. And then I have to listen to my mom say, Bam, you do have a house. Really, Abe? Where? Well, it's Castle Bam. Well, if I go there, then the police will come. And Naveed the shaman, my best friend, came in from fucking Persia. And I can't even go show him my own property. <laughs> Let, that's a lot to break down in 15 that's seconds. A lot. I don't, Castle, first of all, you need to stop calling your house Castle Bam, all right? You, Count Chocula, it's time to grow up. He all does right? have quite an inflated sense of ego. I don't have Castle Bam. They took Castle Bam from me. You beat the shit out of your family and threatened to kill them, and then you ran away from the cops. You're probably not allowed back on the property legally. You, there's a restraining order. Because the, the other, other people live there. Other people live there. They've established residence. There's rules about this. And you broke the law in that home, and now those people probably have a restraining order against you. And if you go to that house, you're violating the protection order. And yeah, you'll be arrested, Bam. But again, it's their fault. Right. It's never his fault. He's got a restraining order from his own home. 
I can't even go to my own house. Not exactly the full story, is it there, Bam? These type of people never, like, notice that it's not just one person against them. It's like everybody right. collectively doesn't agree with how he's behaving, yeah. but he still thinks it's their problem. If you meet an asshole, you met an asshole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If all day you meet assholes, you're an asshole. That's how it works. If you meet one person and you go, boy, they were a fucking prick, then they're probably a fucking prick. Yeah. But if everyone you run into and deals with deal with is a fucking prick, you're a prick. It might be a you problem. It's a you problem. I have, God, I probably don't even have five people in my life that I go, they're a fucking asshole and I hate them. I have countless people in my life where I go, I love that dude. He's great. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if, you know, all these people in Bam's life are assholes and they're awful, then Bam, there's a good chance that you might, be, never, you know what? Never mind, Bam. You're doing fine. And then Navid the shaman is your best friend. That you know what? I'm going to take that as another red flag. If you if your best friend does not have a first and last name, unless they're Prince or Cher, uh, then you got a weirdo for a fucking friend. Well, and he can't even stay on topic here. Like he's suddenly now, like he goes from I haven't seen my son to oh, and I can't show my best friend my house because somebody stole my house. Oh. Was... <laughs> I gotta. Stand behind the gate. So, yeah, April, I don't have a fucking house. So what, did you do, what did you do to him? <laughs> I was wondering the same thing. What the fuck did April do to Bam Margera? Well, did I you deny him crack? I took him out for a nice seafood dinner and didn't sprinkle crack on it. Oh, yeah. Okay. You didn't sit there with the crack grater and go, say when? <laughs> say when? It's Olive Garden. It's too bad. Bitch. Yeah, April, I don't have a fucking house. So I'm going to smoke Whoa. crack with the bums down at the boardwalk until I'm dead unless you deliver me fucking Phoenix. Yeah, that's a good... You know what? I think everybody is going to hurry that kid, pack it, package him up in a, a car seat, get him in a vehicle, and send him right to you when you offer a deal like that. I'm going to go smoke crack with the bums on the boardwalk unless you deliver me my child. Oh, God. I mean, uh, we're going to get your son down to the boardwalk right now, Bam. We're going to interrupt you mid-crack smoking, and we're going to bring you your son. Bam, your son would be better off at this point. And I always go a lot further than everyone else. But I'm also usually just, I usually just arrive at the destination a little bit earlier. Sure. Um. Bam, your son would be better off if you just went ahead and followed through with that threat. I, I think you would. it would be the best move if Bam Margera smoked crack with the bums until he died. It would be the best move as a father he's made in years. Yes, because it would at least remove all hope and yeah. like ideas and trying from the family. Like They don't need to do that anymore, so it relieves them of that burden. And you wouldn't continuously fuck up any more of his childhood. Right, so At now point. now Bam is just a write-off now. Yeah. You I mean, it would, look, it would fuck up your kid and it would be really bad. But you wouldn't, be, not, you wouldn't be fucking him up every single day yeah, the way you are now. It wouldn't be continuous. Yeah. Get to work, Nikki, or anybody that wants to help. I want Phoenix. Okay. Um, we are here saying you can see your kid. A case finally where I feel that the mother deserves full custody of right. the child. Um, they, they if, if Bam, if you want to see your kid, there's an easy way to do this. Get clean. There you go. Problem solved. Yeah, but solved. then the immediate answer is you, that's not easy. You don't know. Oh, no, we know it's not easy for you. Uh, Alex Nario says, fucking infuriating. Professional horny boy says, this is narcotic terrorism. Uh, Paul Polito says, nobody talks about how fentanyl can solve problems quite like Bam. Yeah. Uh, Carlo says, again, he's about to go Scott Weiland out of his life. If you ever saw Stone Temple Pilots towards the end, he slurred through every concert. Oh, no, he wasn't even uh, part of STP at that point, was he? He was, um, was he Velvet Revolt? No. I don't remember. Was he Velvet Revolt? I can't remember who Scott Weiland. No, Scott Weiland and the um, asshole cunt faces. I can't remember. Oh, that's going to bug me till somebody writes it. Uh, Dario Delfino says Bam needs like a week in detox in a hospital with constant care just to reset his body. They've tried 30 and 60 day rehabs. He leaves. He yeah, leaves and he goes just, and gets fucked up. He just gets to walk out and then start the whole process over again. And it, it, if he turns it around now, he's still got enough money left. 
that he could make he could make it work. And I will say this too, like drug addicts are really quick to say, well, you sober person, you don't know how hard it is to quit this shit. And there are several things, kids being number one, where if I've got kids involved, that shit's going to sober me up from anything. Like if you've got something to live for and to sober up for, you can do just about anything. I promise. I, I think, um, I think as far as Bam's concerned, uh, people, you know, if, if Britney Spears was so bad, that they could put her under a conservatorship. He's in way worse shape than Britney Spears mm -hmm. ever was. Yeah, you know, well, and, I've thought about that. Like, and Britney Spears is far better behaved than Bam Margera. They're talking is. about uh, conservatorship for Amanda Bynes now too. Yeah. And yeah, but nobody wants to talk about Bam. <laughs> they, I mean, look, Britney Spears got off the conservatorship, and now they're talking about maybe how that was a mistake, and they should put her back on one again. And she's in better shape than Bam Margera is. Mm -hmm. Uh, Megan K. Wow, this is the first BJ simp I've seen so far. Uh, how does she enable him? It's not like she has control over what he does. She has multiple channels with hundred, hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Oh, well, then it's okay to bring a guy in the throes of fucking crack addiction who's having problems seeing his child onto your show so you can exploit him for views. Wow. That is a really brain-dead fucking take. Oh, but she has hundreds of thousands of subscribers. So it's okay to bring this guy on, manipulate him. She's defending him as if she thinks he's in the right, so he will yeah. come on her show and trash people who he needs, alienate his family further. You understand that this broad made it a lot more difficult for this guy to ever see his fucking kid again. Yep. And, Bro and brought him a little... That BJ lady and, and her just really weird, like, disassociated fucking me, me, me... Uh, it, all in this for the views attitude towards this BAM thing. You understand that she moved his doomsday clock closer to midnight. But no, it's okay. She has hundreds of thousands of views. And how does she enable him? It's not like she has control over what he does. She cannot book him on the fucking channel. There's a million other more interesting people that she can have on. But she had BAM on why? To talk about, uh, uh, you know, uh, multiverse theory? No. She had him on because he's a fucking mess. And she could get something out of the uh, controversy, the drama. Yeah, I'll say it again. From the tiny clip we watched, she like she knew exactly what would get him crying and all this shit. And like it, just his son's name and stuff. And he starts having a mental breakdown. And she sits there completely stone-faced and right. cold and continues to throw his family and his son's name out there. So he keeps going. And then calls his mother and trashes her on the show. And what's the what's the uh, warning she puts up beforehand? She's like, hey, I really wanted to show that, but, you know, legal problems came up and they didn't let me. It's like, you shouldn't air that. That's fucking evil to air something like that because it hurts this guy you claim to care about. It did seem like she had him on there just because she's yes. a total simp for him and wants the views, but emotional abuse. Yeah. Deranged Lunatic, a.k.a. DL with 199, says, April, is that moonshine you're drinking? Oh, totally. Of course. Uh, friends die. They are pussies. Get over it. Says fun with you. I mean, yeah, I mean, people die. People do lose people every day. That doesn't mean you have to be a drug addict. Uh, Chris Weaver says, Steve-O and Brandon Novak, two people who made complete flips in their lives. Yeah, I mean, people can, people can get better. And uh, again, Steve-O... God, I'm, I, I, I can't, if you bring up Steve-O, the first thing I will always say about him is uh, either he's a nice guy or number one, impressed. Like he has led an impressive life to be able to come back from where he was. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen my kid in two, oh yeah, Killer Beehive. I haven't seen my kid in two months. Good. That's a positive. That's the only good thing you've done as a father so far. Uh, Tunces says Phil Margera needs to, needed to smack him more as a kid. Yeah, I saw a lot of that. People saying his yeah. dad was really too um, passive, too passive with him. I mean, when he was a kid, for sure. If even if you watch the original Jackass movies, just the pile of shit Bam was to his parents back then for the goof. I mean, my parents would have fucking whipped me over the things that he did. No uh, Mark way. Mark Stevens says Castle Jess just because he knew that would fucking bother you, junkie. Yeah, we'll stop pissing in the sink. Uh, Bam lives in the woods anyway. Yeah, go pitch a tent and go fucking, you know, bring the bums with you. 